everyone welcome to the video my name is Marie uh, Emma is usually here but she couldn't so she's facetiming so and she's currently muted but yeah <laughs> you already know what we're gonna be doing but first leave a like it really help the channel out kind of push the video out to everyone else it'd be really awesome Sheesh, it's been a month since I've recorded my goodness been a while it's taking a little bit to get back into it post way too often and then I just go blank I never go back to the carpet store holy this guy's taking Roy off the grid! You already know what we're gonna be doing. Some visual effects and tips and tricks, a full tutorial. Before we continue, leave a like on the video. That would really be appreciated. Also, we just got the join button. Feel free to join down below. You get some exclusive perks and awesome things part of the community. Down in the Discord, there's also exclusive channels there. Free downloads. There's giveaways as well. We're almost at 600 members. We're five away from that. The Discord has been blowing up recently. It's pretty crazy. Before we continue, a lot of you are interested in custom Stinger transition packs for your streaming or your editing editing i've created about five massive download packs in the past all of which are free by the way you can download them at the shop link is down below currently there's an ultimate transition pack coming out very soon in the next week or two this is one of the biggest combining all of the techniques i've learned from the five tra transition packs i've already done combine that all into one taking out all the glitches listening to about over 2000 2500 different messages emails comments and direct messages on what people were looking for in the next custom transition pack and i'm going to be adding that into there so this is literally a hybrid of all the packs i've done so for the last year and a half i've been creating custom packs this one is going to be an ultimate one subscribe stick around for that down in the discord you'll get a notification when that does go live so feel free to join that but let's check out and see what this tutorial is about so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to line our timeline indicator on our footage and we're just going to track our footage here with the tracker we're just going to do a simple point tracker we're going to track the thumb first of all we're obviously going to have to track more than one finger in fact 10 of them which is going to be quite frustrating and annoying it is what it is, it is, what it is. <laughs> so keep in mind when you're actually doing this tracker here the bigger the outside square is the longer it's going to take for your tracker to actually track what's in the small bar however it's going to be more accurate it is also going to require more computer resources so keep that in mind but the smaller the tracker the less accurate but the faster your track will take but the bigger the box is the slower and more pc resources it's going to take but the more accurate it's going to be and you can see it's a painstaking process here on tracking your footage sometimes it's going to get lost even with an accurate track or with big boxes for it to track so just keep that in mind you might have to adjust it as you go down the road two thousand years later and then what i'm going to do once i finish tracking is right click go to new and i'm going to do a new null object now i'm going to right click on that and do rename or i can press enter and rename it i'm going to name it right thumb just to keep things organized because i'm going to have 10 of these null objects then i'm just going to change the color of it turn it to yellow then with my footage selected i select the edit target i'm going to select the tracker i just created the null object which is the right thumb in this case and over here i skip applying it because i, I honestly don't know why i skipped it but later on down the road i realized that i didn't apply this tracking data to the null object so i do that later and you'll understand what that means in a second but what i'm doing as well is i'm duplicating the null object so that because i'm going to have five different null objects for each thumb so once I've duplicated all of those, I'm going to change the colors as well because I love color coordinating things. Once those layers are created, named and color coded, I'm going to select my video footage, select track motion and a new track is going to show up. I'm going to track Emma's pointing finger and basically do the same process all over again. Towards the end, I'm going to make sure I edit the target and apply it to the pointing finger track null object that I created. Then I'm going to apply it and click OK. And then it's just a case of tracking the remaining eight fingers on your hands and you're going to pull your hair out and it's going to take forever. Two weeks later, here we go. All right, so here you can see that the 10 trackers are tracked to Emma's fingers. Each of them are really good. You can see there's a bunch of trackers here, each one dedicated to their specific finger. You can always go back and adjust it if you like. We're not going to have to do that because we paid attention to the track as we were tracking it, making sure it didn't go off course halfway through. So we stopped the tracking, adjusted the tracker, and then continued tracking. 
Now what we're going to do is right click and do new solid. And we're just going to make the solid a black solid. It, it's not important the color. And we're just going to name it whatever we like. This layer is going to contain the lines. So what I'm going to do is go to search bar and do beam in the effects and presets. Drag that onto the layer. And then you'll see we have this line. So I'm going to obviously choose my colors tweak the colors to the way I like and also the settings. Really, it's just a personal preference. You can copy these settings if you'd like, no big deal. And then I'm gonna take the percentage of the line length to 100% so that the end of the lines are towards the pointers or the points that you're gonna to have to move on the fingers. So you're gonna track them. So I'll click on one of the points, drag the pick whip onto the position of your first track. When you click out, you'll see that the one point is now tracked to the thumb. Great, we're gonna do this another 10 times. Nine times, I mean. So then on the ending point, you're gonna alt click the stopwatch, click and drag the pick whip all the way down onto the position parameter on the left thumb. Now you can see the other end of the line is attached to the thumb. And you can see as you scroll down, it's gonna be tracked really nicely and it's gonna look really good. Assuming you did your track well, this is gonna look perfect. Now, obviously it doesn't look as great and that's why we're gonna add lens flares later. We're gonna also add a little more effects to just sell the effect and just make it look more realistic as well. And then it's just a case of duplicating that solid with that line and you can pick up each end to each corresponding finger. So you can see here that once all the lines are tracked to each finger, it looks really good. Now you could end here, assuming you are lazy like me, but because I'm making a tutorial, I gotta make it look good and attractive so that people actually watch the video. So what I'm gonna do to help sell the effect more is I'm going to add lens flares to the points on the fingers. But before I make it look fancy, I've gotta actually make sure that the lines show up where they should be and disappear when they should. But before I make it all pretty with lens flares, you actually got to make sure that the lines appear and disappear when they should. That way it doesn't look strange. Then I'm going to go up the timeline, keyframe the length of each line down to 0%. That way it disappears before the video and then it shows up when Emma puts out her hands and shows the effect. I'm also going to keyframe the start and ending thickness. That way there's not these strange little dots on screen before the actual effect shows up. So now you can see that when you play it, those lines show up, but obviously it's a little too slow. So just drag it down, close the gap a little bit and just speed up the effect. And then we're just gonna do the same when they actually go out. So I'm gonna copy the keyframes and then I'm actually just going to drag the other keyframes on the other side of the second keyframe. That way that effect is reversed and they disappear instead of reappear. That way they disappear when Emma takes down her hand and because it would just look strange if they were still on screen at that point. Now this is where it gets even more interesting. We're gonna to decorate it make it look nice with lens flares i use optical flares from video copilot but you can use the free lens flares in after effects they're native to after effects if you don't have the premium version of optical flares video copilot has those i use them because they're great they're amazing one of the best lens flare products or plugins that i've ever used so i would highly recommend you grab those if you don't have them already because you can use them for more than just this you can use them for basically anything so once i go through the effects and all the presets that are already there I can also customize the lens flare to however I like. So I can take out different effects and different uh, refractions that the light has in the lens essentially is what it is because sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, especially with 10 flares on the screen at the same time. So I'm gonna reduce the lens flare a little bit as well. I can also change the color by pressing this button over here and I can choose it to whatever color I want. In my case, it's gonna be purple because that's the practical light that I used in the video. Then what I'm gonna do is I'll click the position keyframe stopwatch and I'm gonna pick whip it to the position of the first null. Now it's tracked to the thumb, but obviously it looks too bright. So I'm gonna just take that down, tweak it to the settings I want. You can feel free to copy the settings again if you'd like. And then what I'm also gonna do is keyframe the brightness by clicking the stopwatch drag that keyframe down in time a little bit and then take it down to zero. It'll create a keyframe automatically. And what I want to do is just have that lens flare show up when it needs to show up. So before the effect happens, the lens flare has disappeared and then it kind of comes in once it is active. Then I'm gonna add an expression. So I'll click the stopwatch, add wiggle, open bracket 10 comma five, close bracket, 
That way it adds a little bit of a flicker to the actual effect or the lens flare. And because the light is actually flickering, the practical light I used is flickering, the lens flare is gonna be flickering as well to help sell the effect. Then when I go towards the end of the effect, I'm just going to copy and paste the opacity keyframes, drag the end one before the first one. That way it actually fades out when the effect needs to go away because we don't want the lens flare again on the screen the whole time because that would look strange. Then once I'm happy with that one lens flare, I'm gonna duplicate that nine more times so I have 10 in total. To make things easier for myself, I'm just gonna click the shy tool on the layers that I don't need to see right now, then click the main shy tool. That way it just hides those layers for now and I don't have to scroll through a bunch of layers to get to the ones I need. Then with my next lens flare selected, I'm going to pick up the position to the new position, which is the pointing finger in this case, on the right hand. Now that lens flare is attached to that finger and I can hide that layer with the shy tool so I don't have to mess with it. And I'm gonna do the rest with all the other lens flares. Once we've done that, you can see here's the result we have so far. Obviously, the little lights or the pink reflections in the lens are not particularly ideal since there's so many of them on screen right now. It would have been okay if there was one or two, but they're a little distracting because there's 10 of them. So later on down the road, I actually go ahead and remove those. And you can already see there's a bunch of layers here, enough to make you go crazy. <laughs> And like I mentioned real quick on each layer, I'm just going to go ahead and remove that annoying little light reflection in the lens. That way it's not distracting. Now the lights that I had weren't very bright. So what I did was I had them closer to Emma in the shot, but you could obviously see them in the bottom left corner. So what I did was I duplicated my background layer, right clicked on it, go to time, go to time freeze or freeze frame, and then just drag a mask around that part of the composition to hide those lights now if i scrub through my footage you can see that that's gone looks great quick and easy next i create an adjustment layer i'm going to make it purple because again i like colors i'm going to search for the bulge effect in the effects and presets and i'm going to drag it up and uh you can actually turn this into some fun really emma was here when i was doing this and she was not having fun <laughs> Okay, more serious. When we actually move the effect to where it should be, which is between the hands, what we're gonna do is we're gonna keyframe it. So first of all, take it down to a small portion of the video here, kind of in the middle of between the hands where you want it to start. I'm gonna go to where the effect starts. Then I'm gonna go ahead and keyframe basically everything. And then I'm just going to scale it all the way up and just adjust it to where it needs to be. Now I obviously created a new keyframe when I did that, so I don't have to worry about anything. And you can obviously mess around with the settings and see what it does. Right now, I'm just experimenting to see what the effect looks like and then with that layer selected i just press u on the keyboard to show the effects and all the edited properties and i'm just going to copy the first keyframes after the second part of the keyframes because i want the effect to bulge out and then bulge in again back to where its original position was so what's going to happen is the bulge is going to move fast initially and then it's going to close a little slower but not too slow to where it looks unrealistic or not that great next what i'm going to do is right click press new and i'm going to do a adjustment layer and then I'm going to go into the effects and presets and I'm going to search turbulent displacement. I'm going to drag that onto the new adjustment layer that I just created and I'm just going to create a mask. This mask is going to be circular around the area of interest and I'm just going to adjust the settings again. You can copy the screenshot if you'd like to. Really it's just a matter of messing around with it and I'm also going to feather the mask so that it kind of feathers the edges. It doesn't have such a harsh edge around it. Then what I'm going to do is keyframe the scale and I'm just going to go down and Time and just scale it all the way down. And I'm gonna obviously make sure that the position of it is right in the middle where it should be so that it doesn't look like it's scaling from the side and then all the way out to cover essentially the midsection between the hands. And then I'm also gonna scale it back down again to 0%. That way it goes back down because the bulge isn't gonna be in the effect the whole time. Then next thing I have here is a bit of footage from aejuice.com. Link is down below if you wanna grab it. Very useful plugin. You can use it in After Effects. You don't have to leave After Effects for any reason. What you can do is go to Window and go to AE Juice Pack Manager 3 plugin once you install it. There's also a bunch of free stuff on the pack as well. So link is down below again if you want to use that. You can obviously see that there's a lot of pieces in this product, pre-made assets. You can add glowing line effects to your videos like I've done in the past. You can see that there's a lot of options and videos and tutorials that I have online about how to do that as well. Links are on the top right in the cards, but let's continue with this tutorial. So once I find my different assets and effects, I'm gonna double click them to add them to the composition or sequence. And I'm just gonna hide some of them because I added more than one. I'm gonna combine some of the effects to make them look nice. 
So you can see it's just a case of tweaking the scale, rotation, and also the colors as well. You just manipulate the color in the effects and controls tab in the tint effect. And I almost forgot that there's a part in the video right before where Emma kind of has the effect with her hands where she looks and there's a kind of a flash on her face with the color effect. Obviously that was done with the practical lights. So I'm gonna have to add some of that glowing animation as well from the AE Juice Pack Manager as well. So once I add that in, pretty simple and easy. Just a few tweaks of the scale of rotation and a bit of the position and it looks great. I almost forgot about that, but thank goodness I actually watched the video 700 times before I send it out. And then some last touches. She kind of walks into the screen kind of flicking her finger as if there's some pain or some kind of electricness or electricity to it. What I have Action Essentials pack from Video Copilot as well. They've got some sparks. I just kind of grab some of those assets, drag it into the project, add a tint to it and change the tint to purple that way it looks great and just reposition it where i need it i also sped it up a little bit so that it doesn't have to be so slow and the sparks are kind of flying down towards the ground and then obviously in the beginning of the sequence there's the part where emma throws the dart and there's kind of electricity there where the first effect happens i basically do the same thing with the ae juice pack manager 3 with the liquid elements so just add those glowing ones in change the tint to pink or purple kind of the similar color to what the practical lights were and it's simple as that one other thing i'm going to do is right click click new and do adjustment layer what i'm going to do is just do a mask around emma's face and then in the effects and presets tab i'm going to search glow and i'm just going to drag that onto the layer i can adjust the settings again like i've done before you can obviously see a screenshot of the final result but it may be different in your case depending on the lighting situation and a couple other factors it's just a case of tweaking it to how you like it so that's it if you guys enjoyed leave a like it'd really be awesome help the channel out subscribe stick around for the future if you do want extra perks in the channel feel free to hit that join button next to the sub button you'll get exclusive perks and uh, you'll be the first to see the proposal video remember the new custom stinger transition pack the ultimate pack just mm, I have weeded through all the different issues and there's no words. It's an amazing pack. I'm so excited. It's a really robust pack. Literally, if you don't know how to use After Effects or Premiere Pro that well, even if you have such a basic level or understanding of it, you can still utilize this pack to its fullest potential. New video on that coming out very soon. So join the Discord server down below to get a notification when that does go live. Feel free to sign up on the email list on the site down below. You'll also get an email about that. And yeah, that's it. Before you go, share the video with your dog, nanny, and your boss. And until then, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.